So I'm assuming that either most of you or some of you are going to be graduating school or art school this year. I'm pretty sure that the idea of what happens after graduation can be pretty intimidating as that's kind of the point of where you might no longer have guidance for the next steps you should be taking to pursue an art career or even what to do with that time period gap if you don't land on a job immediately. So in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about what it's like being unemployed because guess what? This is my fourth time being let go from a studio, basically in animation. It's a very project driven industry and usually whenever a project wraps is when you pretty much just are off back onto your own into the wilderness to seek your next gig. So by the time you're watching this video, your girl is unemployed. So going back in time, let's go back to 2018. That was when I graduated Cal Arts. And before my graduation date, I was already applying to jobs at studios early that year and you know no one really ever responded to me after graduation I moved into my very first apartment and while I was moving in I was still just constantly checking my phone all day every day with no response then finally one day I was at Ikea with my family and we were shopping and I finally got the call at Ikea from DreamWorks for that full-time position I previously interned as so I thought that I was gonna land this job because at the interview they were giving me so much hope and being like you were amazing we loved you so I didn't know what reason they would have to not hire me and then of course once I got the phone call they were like yep sorry we wanted to go with somebody with more experience in the industry because we need this person a little bit more urgently and you're still more green and once i had dinner with my family that night i literally broke down and cried because i just felt so hopeless i felt worthless i didn't know what was going to happen because i've never been in this position i was also waiting to hear back from Disney TV at that time. And I literally have not heard back from them for maybe over two months at this point. And of course things were feeling hopeless. So I've been messaging them and emailing them and asking for any updates regarding my application only to not really ever receive any news or updates as per usual. And eventually they responded to me and told me that they went with somebody else and they hope that I will stay in touch and be considered for future opportunities and of course like you know everyone says that but you are not really ever guaranteed anything I decided to completely trash my old CalArts portfolio and then create a new one in which you can now see on this video so after I made my new portfolio I actually got a interview request from DreamWorks for a trainee position for storyboarding and once I went through that interview process which was very intense I struggled to answer some of the questions especially when it came to what types of films do you like watching and I just answered with some of the films I've genuinely loved and enjoyed but I did not realize that they were particularly looking for films with outstanding recognition I guess when it comes to their cinematography I just listed films I genuinely liked because that was the question that was asked for me at first so after I had that whole interview process, I waited a few more weeks. I was greeted with a message from the recruiter at DreamWorks pretty much telling me that I didn't get the job and their tip for me from that interview was to just go and watch more films. I was asking my friends for film recommendations to watch so I could study, but I realized that, you know, not all films are always available on Netflix. And that's why I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. So Surfshark is a VPN that keeps your online identity and personal information safe, as well as changing the IP address of your device so you can surf the internet anywhere around the globe. So Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is actually one of the series that really got me into drawing. So I realized that Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is not available in the US, but it is available on the Japan Netflix. So I basically can set my VPN to Japan and hey, now I can watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood on Netflix. So my friends and I often went to coffee shops to go work on our portfolios. And of course, when you hook up to that public Wi-Fi, you're in the most vulnerable position to have your information potentially stolen 
stolen. So that's why it's really important to use a VPN so that you can stay protected. So if any of you are graduating right now or are back on that job hunt and you're gonna be out and about binging a lot of shows, consider Surfshark in which I am glad to offer 83% off as well as three months free using my code MewTripled. And they also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can check it out in the link in the description box below if you would like to try Surfshark risk-free. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video and back to my story. So during this phase in my life, when things started to feel a little bit darker for me, I was just like, I'm just gonna create my own comics and post them on Instagram. I was just like, you know, there's a community that literally exists just through my phone. So why not just be a part of it and just share my artwork online and see if I can start any conversations or connections with anybody through Instagram. So that was the birth of my Instagram in which you can follow me at Mew Triple to read more of my personal comics and sneak peeks of my graphic novel, Mish the Bad Demon, which is now available in bookstores near you. So I kind I just continued going on with my Instagram at that time and I would occasionally get some freelance and commission opportunities which I am thankful for and then finally Disney feature reached out to me to potentially try out for a storyboarding position although I already kind of knew going into it that I wasn't landing on it because it sounded like they wanted someone who was already experienced and I only interned at Disney previously as a 2d animation intern so I kind of just went in thinking like, well, thanks for giving me the chance to just, you know, present my stuff and that's it. And that's pretty much what it was. I went to the interview and I presented my storyboards from my new revamped storyboard portfolio. And they pretty much let me know after that interview that, hey, maybe not this time, but maybe next time. And I was like, yeah, I kind of already like had a feeling about this. So after the Disney interview, I was again back to this state of hopelessness, but then Finally, DreamWorks TV reached out to me. I think I went through like three different branches of DreamWorks at this point and they wanted to interview me for a revisionist position at DreamWorks and I was like, okay, let's go for it. But then I also was reached out to by Netflix animation slash Glen Keen Productions for a storyboard revisionist position as well, which at that time Netflix animation and Glen Keen Productions was very up and coming and we were just like all excited about it. So I was just like literally overnight, I went from two to three months of nothing, nobody speaking to me whatsoever, nobody wanting to do anything with me, to all of a sudden, I have to now choose between two companies. So I interviewed with both DreamWorks TV and Netflix Animation slash Glen Keane Productions, which was eventually what Trash Truck came to be. And I ended up going with Netflix Animation and Glen Keane Productions because they were offering more pay for a revisionist at that time. And I also felt like it was a better growth opportunity for me because there was something about Netflix animation where it was very new and so many artists from various animation studios were kind of coming into one place, which made it a very appealing studio to be at at that time. So I ended up going with Glen Keane production slash Netflix animation. And that's pretty much how my animation career began ever since then. So despite the endless list of rejection emails I got, and which if you guys are ever interested, I would be probably more than happy to share my rejection letters that I got post-graduation to landing my first job and even some of the rejection letters I still get to this day as I job hunt for future gigs so I would love to make a video on that I'm definitely going to be having to hide the personal informations of course of the people I spoke with but I would love to share it just for educational purposes and just to let people know realistically what this process is like so let me know in the comments below or like this video if you think that that's a video you would like to see in the future of me just straight up verbatim reading rejection letters and kind of reflecting on it and talking about why I think this happened and what I learned from it. But of course there were a lot of other things I learned from this process as well because at that time you're not really sure why these things are happening but after working in the industry for five to six years now I feel like I can kind of get why things were the way they were. So if this might provide any of you comfort post-graduation or 
job hunting, here's what I learned. So first is I feel like it's normal to expect rejection because let's be real, when you're a student and you first graduated, not many people in the industry really know who you are just yet. And they are going to be prioritizing people who work at those studios first, especially for more veteran positions. And I think if anything, it does bring me some comfort to know that, hey, once you start working, it usually should kind of get easier from that point onward because you have some sort of establishment in the community. And sometimes the seasons of projects just simply might not be right. Sometimes there are just not enough projects with open entry level positions at that time and it has nothing to do with you. Second, I would recommend to keep yourself busy because even though I got a lot of rejections during this time period, the only thing that kind of did keep me motivated and keep my head in the game was working on my own personal projects, which was thus the birth of Succubishes and all of the comics on Instagram, which now have brought me to so many other places now that I started it. And if I never started my Instagram back then, I would not have a book. I would not have my comic series on Instagram and I probably would not be here talking on YouTube. So I kept myself busy. I worked on my own projects. I accepted freelance opportunities and commissions for just financial stability during that time. And I would also suggest if you are able to, to take this time to go travel. You're not really gonna have this opportunity really once you start working because sometimes vacation days aren't always just available. You might have to accrue them. So once you start working, you might have to wait a while before you go on your next vacation. So why not take this opportunity to just celebrate your graduation and go somewhere if you are able to do so. Next, if you find that the portfolio you've been submitting hasn't really been getting you anywhere, maybe try just discarding it and trying to do a whole new one from a blank slate. Because for me, I felt like it was so obvious that my old CalArts portfolio was based off of school assignments and I wanted to do one purely of what would represent me as a person. So try to make a portfolio that's more authentic to who you are and your interests and what you would like to do if you were a storyboard artist or an artist in whatever field you're trying to break into. And then again, I would say invest yourself at this time. Like if you are free with time and you don't have anything to do and you already built your new portfolio and you apply to all of the jobs you could think of for the time being, why not start your social media platform or start that small business that is something you would have been interested in as a side job or work on a book idea and speak with a book agent about it or something like that. I feel like no matter what, these kind of interests are going to pop up along the way when you are starting a full-time job. There are a lot of full-time artists I know right now that are considering side projects or side things that allow them to kind of do their own thing. But I would say if you invest early in it while you have that time to, without a job taking up your time, you're going to be so much more thankful when you already have that all figured out, start your job, and all you kind of have to do once you start your job is manage the things you already started because you already know what it's like to work on it instead of starting it in the middle of your job. And then lastly, I would say sometimes you just need to do what needs to be done. I don't think there's any shame in working a part-time job, a retail job, or doing something just to make money or just to make ends meet, as long as you're continuing to stay motivated in animation because we don't all wanna fall into that stereotype of how all artists just become baristas or something. And there's nothing wrong with being a barista or doing that as your side job while you're trying to hunt for an animation or art career. But I will say that there are some people that do fall into that world and kind of never get out of it. Unless if that is something you wanna do and you realize you wanna do a career change, then go for it. But I'm just speaking about the people who still wanna pursue art, but feel a little bit held back. There are also other options you can consider because even though you just graduated, maybe the school you went to was not necessarily the best for forming connections or building a community within animation or art. So you can try to take online classes at Concept Design Academy, Brainstorm School, or Schoolism, or all of these online schools where literal animation and art professionals who have the connections in the industry will be teaching you and reviewing your homework and giving you feedback. And you can also go to conventions like Lightbox Expo or CTN. Although I will say that going to these online schools will give you the chance to have a better connection versus going to these conventions and only talking to people 
people for like less than five minutes and then they forget who you are. And then lastly, something that some other people do just to transition or get their foot in the door in the animation industry is they apply for production assistant or internships instead if they cannot land a full-time job. I believe some internships do allow non-students to apply, although you will have to look further specifically into those job applications for that. But in terms of production assistance, some people just do that as their first job so that they can just at least be exposed to a team of people in animation and work with them. And then through that, they showcase their work and they're like, hey, I do want to become a storyboard artist in the future. And because you already have those connections, it might make things a little bit easier. So these are just some of the options of things that might need to be done if you feel like nothing else has been working for you. And let's say it's already been a year. Try to consider these things if you haven't done them already. But those are just kind of my pieces of advice for anybody who is about to graduate, is graduating, or is still job hunting. This is just my story and my experience and hopefully my story can kind of inspire you to feel like not all hope is lost. Sometimes literally things won't happen for the longest time but then they'll happen overnight. So sometimes it's just about timing but just know that you're doing the best that you can do and it's not always going to be personal. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, Mish the Bad Demon Volume 1 is already out in bookstores, so you can check it out in the links below if you would like to purchase a copy. I wish the best of luck to any of you who are graduating or are job hunting. I know the struggle is real, and I will see you all in the next one.